so good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am Mohammed from the Eastman Dental Institute, and I'm uh, presenting home care within supportive periodontal care on behalf of the Eastman Dental Hospital. So I'm going to start by summarizing the relevant systematic reviews. I will present the guidelines afterwards, and then at the end, I will give you some practical applications on how to use these guidelines. So the first systematic review was done by Slot and coworkers. The author's conclusions on these uh, uh, systematic reviews that looked into mechanical plaque removal of, uh, of periodontal maintenance patients found no strong evidence-based conclusion that can be drawn concerning any specific oral hygiene devices. There were no differences between manual toothbrushes and power toothbrushes when it comes to plaque scores and gingivitis scores. And the adjuvant use of interdental brushes was found to be the most effective method for interdental cleaning. Uh, there was no adjuvant effect of flossing to tooth brushing uh, in periodontal maintenance patients, and oral irrigators were not found to reduce visible plaque scores, but had an effect on gingivitis scores. The second systematic review um, concerning our domain is the systematic review by Kara and coworkers on behavioral change therapy. Uh, so they looked into different behavioral change therapies uh, and, and their efficacy in periodontal maintenance uh, or active periodontal therapy. So what they found was psychological interventions might ha may have a positive influence on oral hygiene, but there was no established superiority between the different psychological intervention methods. Um, patients who used self-inspection uh, with videotapes uh, were not found to be effective to improve oral hygiene. Um, and the overall conclusion was further research is needed to assess uh, the long-term effects of the psychological intervention methods. So it is important to understand that um, most studies included within these two systematic reviews uh, had a, uh, a large array of limitations. Uh, one of them was most of the studies were heterogeneous in terms of designs. Uh, the short, the follow-up period in different studies was quite short, ranging from anywhere between three months and a year. There was high attrition bias. Uh, there was performance bias due to inability to blind uh, the, the subjects. Uh, there, will, uh, there was also selection bias in some of these studies. So uh, in general, the the quality of evidence uh, uh, included within these systematic reviews was at a high risk of bias. So the guideline recommendations covers seven domains when it comes to home care. The first one answers the question, are oral hygiene instructions important and how should they be performed? And the recommendation was with the highest degree of uh, confidence was we recommend repeated individually tailored instruction in mechanical oral hygiene including interdental cleaning in order to control inflammation and avoid potential damage for patients within supportive periodontal care. The second question was how should we choose an appropriate design of a manual or a power toothbrush and interdental cleaning devices and the recommendation was we recommend taking into account patient needs preferences when choosing a toothbrush design and when choosing an interdental brush design. And this was the highest grade of evidence as well. And the third question was, should we recommend a powered or a manual toothbrush? And the recommendation was the use of a powered toothbrush may be considered as an alternative to manual toothbrushing for periodontal maintenance. The fourth question concerning uh, this topic was how should interdental cleaning be performed? And the recommendation was whenever anat uh, anatomically possible, we recommend that toothbrushing should be supplemented by the use of interdental brushes. So this pegs the question, what is the value of dental flossing for interdental cleaning in periodontal maintenance patients? And the recommendation was we do not suggest flossing as the first choice for interdental cleaning in periodontal maintenance patients. However, what is the value of other interdental devices for interdental cleaning and periodontal maintenance patients? The recommendation was in interdental areas that were not reachable by toothbrushes, we do suggest supplementing toothbrushing with the use of other interdental cleaning devices, such as maybe floss or oral irrigators or uh, the rubber picks in periodontal maintenance patients. So what is the additional strategies and motivation uh, are useful? 
uh, the recommendation was we recommend emphasizing the importance of oral hygiene and engaging the periodont periodontitis patients in behavioral change for oral hygiene improvement. And this was the highest rate of evidence as well. So now I would like to cover some clinical applications uh, related to these recommendations. So as it stands right now, uh, these clinical guidelines did not substantially change our practices within the Eastman Dental Hospital, uh, as we were providing most of the guidelines even before they were published. However, we would like to discuss uh, the aspects related to their implementation within the dental community, as we believe this is more relevant as most uh, patients who receive supportive periodontal care currently in the UK uh, receive them within primary dental care. So there is uh, a wide array of limitations that exist in the public health sector within the UK uh, related to uh, time provided to provide oral hygiene instructions. So most gen general dental practitioners have a limited time of 10 minutes that they will need to review the periodontal condition of the patient and provide some oral hygiene instruction. And most general dental practitioners are not incentivized uh, to do uh, to repeat oral hygiene instructions in an effective manner. And we do understand that the, the limitations related to this could be generalized to other countries in Europe where a, a specialist, uh, where a, um, a private practice-based healthcare system uh, is, is present rather than a public healthcare system, which even makes it more complicated to generalize these guidelines within primary dental care. Other implementation aspects that we've uh, considered are related to uh, uh, interdental hyg uh, hygiene aids. So uh, we do understand that patient economic consideration should be considered when prescribing interdental cleaning devices such as interdental brushes um, and a, a po possibly a limited amount of interdental brushes should be prescribed for patients, uh, taking into consideration uh, their manual dexterity, their preference of brand uh, as well, uh, maybe um, considering engaging with the industry to try to find some solutions for the cost of these interdental devices, as many patients find, find them not affordable. When it comes to alternative interdental devices, such as the oral irrigators or the um, uh, rubber uh, interdental devices, uh, we do recommend that uh, these devices not be prescribed as a first uh, line of care. However, patients who are interested within these devices uh, can be encouraged to, to add them as supplements to their interdental brushing uh, or interdental cleaning uh, routine. However, emphasizing the importance of using interdental brushes as the first line of care. When it comes to the implementation of psychological methods, uh, we do believe that repeated oral hygiene instructions should be provided uh, either uh, both chairside and on uh, models that will facilitate the patient's acceptance to these oral hygiene instructions. Also, we do believe that the patients should demonstrate uh, their ability to perform oral hygiene habits effectively within the dental clinic. Uh, now, this goes back to uh, what we said in the beginning, where uh, within primary dental care, the, the de general dental practitioners do not have time to provide uh, oral hygiene instructions effectively. So possible solutions for this uh, could involve the use of teledentistry. We have used tele teledentistry within COVID period. Uh, possibly using that uh, uh, could improve the oral hygiene uh, compliance of the patient uh, and it could improve their technique as well. When it comes to the psychological intervention, such as motivational interviewing or cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, the evidence behind these therapies uh, show is is uh, quite uh, unclear. Um, and it, it, in the systematic reviews, it is mentioned that there could be potential benefits to these techniques. However, there are a wide array of uh, uh, confounders when it comes to coming up with a solid conclusion. So what we believe is uh, a, a, a properly trained 
specialist or a dentist could provide these treatments effectively, even though the uh, improvements might be small, but it could be substantial for certain groups of patients. So understanding the logistics and cost of training uh, within the dental community, obviously these the, the general dental practitioners and the uh, undergraduate dental students uh, will training them to provide these kinds of uh, uh, psychological interventions would be quite costly and time consuming. So we do believe that uh, possible candidates for psychological intervention should be referred to specialist care as we do have the time. We don't have the time restrictions within, within our university uh, setting. Uh, like they do within the primary dental practices uh, and we were trained properly to provide them uh, to our patients. So with that I would like to conclude and thank you all for your listening and a uh, warm welcome to you all from London. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much Mohammed. Um, the aspect of the financial incentive for uh, for supportive therapy and oral hygiene uh, uh, reinforcement is a very important uh, aspect and maybe should be uh, debated and discussed more yes or well, we yeah we do believe that obviously different countries uh, will implement these guidelines in different ways but the I, we do believe that dentists within primary dental care should be incentivized to provide these treatments um, as they will help uh, reduce probably specialist uh, care referrals and hopefully maintain the community in a good condition. Oh, I agree with you and uh, uh, another aspect should be these places or these countries don't have uh, still don't have hygienists which are a major factor for uh, uh, supportive therapy and the reinforcement of oral hygiene. Thank you very much.